Hi and welcome back to Sick Money, where we discuss all things related to finance. In today's how-to series, we're going to teach you how to calculate tracking error. Now to start off, here is the formula for tracking error. But we're going to jump straight into how to calculate tracking error in Excel. So the first thing we need to do is calculate the differences between our fund and our benchmark. As you can see, we are taking a minus 4.08 to minus 4.21 of the benchmark, and then all these return differentials we're going to calculate right to the end. And then just to calculate the tracking area, it's quite simple, it's just the standard deviation of those differences. And the solar fund tracking error to the benchmark is 0.55%. And this is an ex post or realized tracking error. And it's showing how much active risk it is taking against the benchmark and how different it is to the benchmark return. Now, if someone says to you, this is the ex ante tracking error of 1.5%, what they're talking about is a model has actually estimated the forward tracking error uh, for your fund. So let's go into another fund. This fund, obviously, if you look at here, uh, the, here's the returns and the fund benchmarks. And if you can see the differential between them, it's very small, not very large, and therefore, as expected, the tracking error is quite low at 0.55. But let's look at another fund called the wind fund here. <coughs> And as you can see, the fund returns and the benchmark returns. You can see the differentials here are, you know, getting larger and therefore much larger than the, uh, the solar fund. And therefore, it has a much larger tracking error. So when you do the standard deviation of the differences here, you get 3.99% uh, tracking error. Now, let's move on to a much more uh, riskier fund that's taking much more active bets, the tide fund. And as you can see, you know, the fund returns are very large and different to the benchmark. As you can see here, the differential is going to be quite huge, and you can see some of 15%. So, as you can see here, the tracking error is 7.98%. So, <clears throat> as tracking error is effectively active risk, if you're having an active fund or a fund that's trying to uh, add alpha, over the benchmark. You want to see a tracking error, you know, different from zero. And normally for these active funds um, within the IMA, there's a set range of tracking error or active risk it will be taking. And so it might say within the IMA, a tracking error of three to 6% or a tracking error of five to 10%, so forth. Um, and you want to see your fund operating within these uh, ranges. Um, but if you have an index fund, uh, you want a tracking error that's close to zero. Um, so if we look at the benchmark, say the benchmark return uh, to itself, you know, the return differential is zero and therefore it's tracking error is zero because it's taking an active uh, risk against uh, itself. So therefore, you're getting a tracking error of zero. And that's what we want to see, uh, or a very low number in the basis points, really, uh, when you're investing in an index fund. So that comes to the end of the video. Uh, please click the thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And if you want more videos like this, please subscribe. Uh, thank you for watching and have a great day.